In this lecture, we're going to study the homologous series. The literal meaning of the term homologous series is that it means a family of organic compounds. Now, uh, as we know that there are many different types of organic compounds, there are an unlimited number of different organic compounds. Now, the problem is that uh, all your living organisms, all your fossil fuels, they're all uh, different types of organic compounds. So they need to be classified into different groups so that we can better uh, understand them. So uh, they are divided into families and they are divided into families based on a certain criteria. Now, that criteria is number one, that in a particular family of organic compounds, all the molecules must exhibit similar chemical properties. So that's the first criteria. They must have similar chemical properties. The second criteria used is that they must all have, uh, they all exhibit a trend in physical properties. So they show a trend in physical properties. Physical properties. Now your physical properties uh, basically include your, they include your melting and boiling points. melting and boiling points they also include your solubility and uh, uh, many other things they include your uh, your ph levels your whether something is acidic or basic now or they also include your electrical conductivity whether some compounds are elect uh, are conducting electric electricity or not So uh, these factors are basically part of physical properties. So they show a trend in physical properties. Uh, two compounds do not, uh, they don't, do not generally have the same exact physical property. So they, they're probably going to show a trend in physical properties. For example, if a certain homologous series has low melting points, then all of the molecules in that homologous series will not be having identical melting point or boiling points, but they would have uh, low melting boiling points compared to other family of organic compounds. So a trend is shown in their physical properties. Another factor that must be uh, similar in a family of organic compounds is that they have the same functional group. So they all have the same functional group. What we mean by having a same functional group is we need to define what a functional group is first. Now, a functional group is a, it is a group of atoms or it can be an individual atom as well. So it's a group of atoms that, uh, that determine uh, a molecule's It determines the molecule's uh, chemical properties. Now, one one example, about, uh, I'll give you an example. For example, if a certain molecule has this group, a carbon, double one carbon is present in that molecule. If this group is present in a certain molecule, then they're all going to, it's, this group would react with uh, Br2. So a family of organic compounds that has this group present, all of the reactions would be similar. They're all going to react with Br2. So if there are any two molecules and, they, and both of those molecules, no matter how different they are, if one molecule has C1C and the other molecule has C1C, then the, both of those molecules are going to react with bromine. So there are certain group of uh, atoms that would determine the molecule's uh, chemical reactions or chemical properties. Now, other things that would be similar is 
uh, they are all going to have another point is they're all going to have the same general formula now I'll um, I'll give you an example of this later and we'll discuss this later so let's uh, let's uh, discuss this later when we study general formulas and another property is that uh, successive members in a homologous series homologous so successive members in a homologous series differ by CH2 they all differ by one carbon and two hydrogen atoms now I'm going to discuss the first homologous series so these last two points that we just uh, studied these uh, would be uh, I'll, I'll describe these in detail when we study our first homologous series which is the alkane series the first homologous series that we are going to study is uh, are called alkanes now alkanes is a family of compounds and uh, how do we identify an alkane that's the first criteria that we need to uh, develop how would we identify an alkane now an alkane is a hydro carbon what that means is that it only contains uh, only contains uh, hydrogen and carbon atoms so there would pretty much be nothing else apart from hydrogen and carbon atoms the second criteria is that all bonds in an alkene are single bonds so these are the two criteria that would help us determine whether something is an alkane or not so let's say I want to construct or draw a structure of an alkane I have one carbon atom and uh, I will not I will not have anything else other than carbon and hydrogen atoms so I will only be having carbon and hydrogen atoms so let's uh, say I only have one carbon atom and carbon uh, makes four bonds so if it makes four bonds there would be four separate hydrogen atoms attached to it now this is an alkane because all of the bonds are are single bonds they're all single bonds and you only have carbon and hydrogen atoms in a molecule so this is uh, one example of an alkane another let's draw a more complicated molecule of an alkane let's say I have uh, I have I have uh, four carbon atoms and I have another carbon atom over here and let's draw all the hydrogen atoms now this carbon atom is all is making one bond so it needs to make three more bonds and let's put all these hydrogens over here now it's making it's, now its bonds are complete it's making four bonds one over here one over here one over here and one over here so that's a total of four bonds then we have another two bonds over here another bond would be over here this carbon is now making four bonds and this carbon needs to make and it's making one bond right now it needs to make three more bonds so there are three more bonds attached to this carbon atom and this carbon atom is also making one bond so there would be three more bonds attached to this atom so there are three bonds now this is a slightly more complicated alkane but it's, but it's still an alkane it only contains carbon and hydrogen atoms and all of the bonds are single bonds another important point about alkanes is its general formula the general formula for an alkane is CnH2 
2n plus 2. What this basically means is, uh, let me explain that to you. N basically stands for the number of carbon atoms in a molecule. So N stands for the number of carbon atoms. For example, uh, in this particular molecule, there's only one carbon atom. So let's say there's one carbon atom. So N is one then h would be 2n plus 2 that would mean 1 into 2 that is 2 plus 2 is 4 so the formula of this particular uh, hydrocarbon or alkane is c1 and h4 similarly this has how many carbon atoms it has 1 2 3 4 and 5 so i have 5 carbon atoms so n is equal to 5 and let's look at the formula if n is if n is 5 that's 5 into 2 is 10 10 plus 2 is 12 so the number of hydrogen atoms would be 12 and i can count the number of hydrogen atoms it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so this formula is correct so if i want to know the total number of atoms i can simply uh, look at the I can take a look at the general formula and I, and I can figure out now this uh, uh, for smaller alkanes it's very easy you can actually draw the entire molecule and you can figure out the total number of atoms but for very very large molecules for example I have a molecule which has uh, let's say it has 22 carbon atoms now if it has 22 carbon atoms uh, it would be very uh, tiresome to draw 22 carbon atoms so what I can do is if I want to know how many hydrogen atoms there are, so if n is equal to 22, then h would be 22 into 2 plus 2. So 22 into 2 is 44 and plus 2 is 46. So the number of hydrogen atoms in this molecule would be 46. The second homologous that we are going to study is called... Uh, alkenes it's a family of compounds which is going to have the following uh, criteria which is going to fit the molecules that would be part of this uh, family of compounds the first thing is there would only be hydrocarbons so only hydrocarbons which would mean that only carbon and hydrogen atoms would be part of this molecule uh, so any alkene would be a hydrocarbon the second uh, thing criteria is that it's going to contain this uh, carbon double bond carbon arrangement each molecule is going to have this so this uh, this would be called its functional group which I described earlier is a group of atoms or an arrangement of atoms which determines the molecules chemical properties so carbon double bond carbon would be present which would be uh, the functional group for an alkene so uh, uh, and I'll give you an example for example uh, there's a molecule and it has carbon double bond carbon and uh, this is going to form this carbon would form three bonds so there are three hydrogens over here this carbon is already making three bonds so it's going to make another bond with another hydrogen and uh, there are there would be two more bonds for this carbon atom so uh, this particular group which is present over here if this is present then that molecule would be an alkene uh, another thing uh, about alkenes is uh, we will talk about the general formula the general formula for an alkene is c n and h 2n what this means is for example we'll uh, consider the example that i gave above there are three carbon atoms in this molecule there are three carbon atoms and uh, I've already told you that N basically in the general formula N is the number of carbon atoms. So if N is 3, 
in your hydrogen would be 3 into 2 which is 6 so there would be 6 hydrogens and we can count the hydrogens there's 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 hydrogens in this molecule we can do a few more examples for example uh, there could be an alkene a carbon double bond carbon and there could be uh, carbons on all sides there could be another carbon over here as well so if i want to write down the number of hydrogens uh, this would have three hydrogens with it this would have two hydrogens it's already making two bonds and this would is making three bonds right now it's supposed to have one hydrogen this is making four bonds so no more bonds with this carbon atom. This needs uh, three more bonds. So let's put three more hydrogens and this also needs three more bonds. Now, since there's a carbon double bond carbon present, so this molecule is definitely an alkene. And if I want to, if I want to count the total number of atoms, if, uh, the total number of atoms in this molecule, then uh, this alkene, this particular alkene, has how many carbon atoms? It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So C is 6. Then H would be, since the general formula is CNH, H2N, then your hydrogen atoms would be 2 into 6, which is 12. And we can count the hydrogen atoms in this case. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and 12. So the general formula directly tells me how many total number of atoms uh, there should be in this molecule. And this general formula would be helpful for uh, very large molecules whose structure would be very difficult to draw. For example, there could be alkenes which would have 40 or 50 carbon atoms. So the general formula would be helpful in that case.